A woman who keeps changing boyfriends when she reaches 30. Doesn't get married. Doesn't have kids. Is she the worst person in the world? This movie is about a 30-year-old woman who lives her life as she pleases. It was nominated for several awards including the Academy Awards. The end of the film will give you the answer to what it means to live a good life. Julie has always been a spontaneous person. When relationships no longer made her happy, she broke up with them. She changed her major from medicine to psychology, and her mother was very open-minded and supportive of her decision. But soon she got tired of studying day in and day out and studied photography instead. She used almost all of her living expenses to buy a camera and lenses. She never gave herself a second chance. She met a cartoonist, a man more than 10 years older than her. They soon became acquainted. After one passionate encounter, the man told her they should stop there. He thinks he'll fall in love with her if they keep going. Julie calmly agrees, but from that moment on, she fell in love with this man. Soon they were living together. Julie found that they liked to read the same books and had endless things to say in common. He was her soulmate. They lived a happy and peaceful life until the day the cartoonist took her to visit her friends. They were all married and had children. She looked at the children playing in the courtyard and Julie felt very strange. She didn't want to be a mother. Her boyfriend offers to let her play with the kids, but she gets very cranky. They have a small argument. The stress of being in a relationship with a man in his 40s was adding to her stress. She doesn't want to rush into the next phase of her life. The group laughs and chats at the dinner table. Julie makes some comments about gender equality, but she was accused by his friend. The atmosphere is instantly awkward. Julie was uncomfortable with everything here. She watched her boyfriend having so much fun with the kids. But she was in a deep funk. She didn't know how to continue the relationship. Julie got out of a book, signing with the comic book artist one day and was going home. Looking at the blue sky, she felt more lonely than ever. She walked past a lively party and she couldn't help but walk in. Here she meets an interesting man. The atmosphere between them became more and more ambiguous. But the man says he can't accept emotional deception because he has also made mistakes. But they are still very close to each other almost close to each other's faces. It seems that this is not really cheating. No one dares to come any closer. The man was taking a piss while Julie was laughing. Then it was Julie's turn. She slowly pulls down her pants and sits on the toilet while the man looks at her from across the room. This is their unique way of getting to know each other. Although they had only known each other for an hour, it was as if they had known each other for a long time. When they parted, they only exchanged names, not contact information. Otherwise, the nature of the encounter would have changed. It was supposed to be just a small episode in a boring life. But Julie didn't expect the second encounter to come so quickly. On the day of her part-time job at the bookstore, a woman asked her for a book and she was standing next to the man Julie had met that day. She didn't have time to say hello before they left. Julie had mixed feelings, but the man came running back again. He used the excuse that he had left his sunglasses and came back to tell Julie where he worked. It was a coffee shop. Julie was inexplicably happy, but she didn't think she would make the appointment. Her life with the cartoonist went on uneventfully. Julie often looked at him in a daze. She was tired of her boyfriend's assertiveness, of him talking about Freud all day long. She was also tired of him using psychoanalytic theories to analyze their relationship. One morning Julie turned on the light and the world suddenly stood still. At that moment, she had an inexplicable urge to change this boring life. Everyone was standing still. She was the only one running down the street. She was going to see the man she missed. When they arrived at the cafe, they looked at each other and laughed. On this day, only they exist in the whole world. So they hug and kiss as if no one else. This was the only day they dared to reveal their innermost desires. Julie was fascinated by the freshness and rapport of the relationship. She immediately broke up with her boyfriend. She was afraid to admit that she had cheated on him. Julie hugged her boyfriend with tears in her eyes. She felt guilty but relieved. Her boyfriend was still making his last stand. He promised not to have a baby. Although he wanted a baby, he could compromise for Julie. Julie says it's not just about that. As they talked, they got into a fight again. The boyfriend starts psychoanalyzing again. Julie broke down and argued with her boyfriend. In the end, they Saturday in silence on the sofa, consuming the last of their feelings. Then she left the relationship. The woman stares at her phone and she realizes that her boyfriend is still following her ex-girlfriend. She looked at the picture of her ex-girlfriend, and she was a little jealous, and the boyfriend gave the explanation that he was looking at the news, 
related to environmental protection. Post by his ex-girlfriend, the barista's ex-girlfriend, is a radical environmentalist. A magical camping experience made her feel the call of nature to her. Since then, she has been an extreme environmental advocate. She forced the barista to participate in various strange activities, which made him feel very depressed. Julie's appearance was like a salvation, a glorious color in his life. After they both break up, it's a natural progression to get together. The barista doesn't want children either which is exactly what Julie wants. Their life was simple and easy. She was so happy at the party that she drank too much wine. In her dreams, she dreamed about her ex-boyfriend's comics, which were full of nonsense. The next day, Julie runs into one of her former friends. She learns that her ex-boyfriend has cancer and is dying. She feels a great loss and is not ready to decide whether to visit or not. Julie made a terrible discovery. She was pregnant, although she was in her 30s. She never wanted to have a baby. She wasn't ready to change her life completely. Plus, her boyfriend didn't want a baby. The pressure was so great that Julie had an emotional breakdown. She took out her anger on her boyfriend and then went to the hospital to visit her ex-boyfriend. He had become pale and weak. When he finds out Julie is pregnant, he encourages her sincerely. Ex-boyfriend's encouragement makes her confident. She confesses to her current boyfriend with trepidation. He showed the expected panic. Obviously, he was not ready. The next day, Julie takes a shower and blood runs down her thigh. She no longer has to face this difficult dilemma, but her relationship with her boyfriend was also over. A few years later, Julie became a photographer. While filming a model, she accidentally discovered that the model's boyfriend was the barista. They had a child and seemed to be happy. Julie smiled with relief, even though she was still single in her 30s and still living an unstable life, but she lives a spontaneous life and doesn't change herself to accommodate others. Independent and free, this is what she thinks is the best way to live.